Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. Got it. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? Got him. All right. Oh, yeah. Quality Green Bay fish here. Green Bay fish here. We are headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what a specimen. Specimen. Here he comes, man. Get him. <laughs> this is In Depth Outdoors. <laughs> you got him already. Yeah. You know, the size of these fish, it's just amazing how big they are for being a public fishery. Yeah, look at that thing. That's why we come down here. What'd you get him on? Um, bug bug with a little chartreuse and orange nymph. Gotcha. Pretty nice big whitey. Just tape on this one, just curiosity. That's a dandy. I don't even have a line in the water yet, Cal. There's a 12 mark, so. There's 13, nice 13 inch fish to start the morning here. Got a little fog. Sun's not even close to being up yet and this girl's gonna get back. You know, here on Indup Outdoors, we get lots of questions about, you know, the best gear to use, you know, what kind of rods are best. And one of the most popular questions we get is, where should we go to catch a trophy fish? Whether it be perch, crappie, walleye. And on today's episode of Indup Outdoors, we're gonna try to answer that question, where should we go to catch a trophy crappie, specifically white crappie. Now, where we're from, uh, we don't see a lot of white crappie. It's mostly blacks. There are some fisheries across the upper ice belt where those whites do show up, but for the most part, it's black crappie. So I've never actually gone on a trip to target nothing but whites. And today, I'm fishing with Calvin Schwiel. Uh, we left Minneapolis, Minnesota, hooked up on I-35 and headed south to Kansas City, believe it or not. It's about a six hour drive, and from there we headed west. And where we're at today, we're on Glen Elder Lake. This is a lake that we've been hearing about for a long, long time, and it's a public body of water. It's open to anybody. So do stick around. We're out here first light, and what I think you're gonna see is some of the biggest crappie and some of the only white crappie to hit the ice this year during our broadcast season. Keep that ruler handy. I got another one down here. Look at that screen. Come eat, buddy. Here it comes. Come on. There it is. Oh, oh, this was hanging on it. Don't you be going too up on me, bud. <laughs> oh, you're not going to get a chance. <laughs> oh, no, I missed him. <laughs> another one right away coming. Come on. There, that was an upbite, James. My line just went slack. Really? Look at this fish. Smaller guy. Smaller one, yeah. Well, look what we'll complain about when <laughs> we're on the right lake, huh? Really? Anytime they barely fit into the palm of your hand, yeah, it's, it's a big right. crappie. But they definitely like this Trigger X plastics. That would be a great eater, but free pass today, buddy. There's one. <laughs> I can't hardly get him out of the hole, he's so big. <laughs> Here's your uh, the stick for you. You can go anywhere and catch 11 inch crappies. To catch fish like that though, you gotta come to a special body of water. And this Glen Elder is an amazing lake. You know, we just got started. And just about every fish we put on the ice has been a giant like this. And this is not a, you know, a freak occurrence down here because I've been hearing about Glen Elder Lake for 10 years. The last couple years I've been hearing more and more. That is a beautiful, beautiful fish. That's a thick fish, too. Yes, it is. It's very thick across the shoulders. Just shy of Just 14. Just shy of 14. <laughs> I'm going to let that fish go. What a beautiful fish. What I love is just how thick they are across the back. They're like a phone book for a small town. <laughs> I love it. You know, we're fishing here in shallow water, and so often we're up in the Midwest fishing, uh, you know, trophy crappies midwinter. We're in, you know, 25, 30, 35 foot of water, and there's times when those fish don't release well. Fishing in 11 foot of water, you can catch and release to your heart's content. There's absolutely no issue with letting these fish go. 
Where'd all my fish go? <laughs> oh, here's one. I'll get ears here. Get him. Oh, here he is. Here's, oh, this is a big fish up high. There he is. That's is a big fish. Oh, we could do that here. <laughs> Whoa! Cal, check this thing out. Are you lipping that thing like a largemouth? I'm trying. <laughs> That's awesome. What we're fishing here, one 16th ounce pug bug. To be honest with you, if they made an eighth or a quarter, I'd fish it. Because these fish have such big, big mouths. They're around there chasing bait fish like shad and such. And, but what a beautiful, beautiful fish. You know, back in Minnesota, where we're from, we get to catch a lot of crappies, but they're usually the black crappies. And these whites are awesome. And this is what I like right here. Two more just waiting, sitting there on the flasher, waiting for me to drop back down and catch another one. There they are. That's what a crappie guy loves to see. Bait's dropping down, big mark sitting there waiting for him. Let's see if we can't catch him. Got him. <laughs> uh, that's awesome, Cal. <laughs> Look at this. It's got a mouth like a largemouth bass. <laughs> Check this out. That thing just kept coming out of the hole. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> That's a lot of crappie. You know, I haven't caught a lot of white crappie in my life, and that is without a doubt the largest one I've ever caught. I'm going to put him on a ruler. That's 100% why we made the trip down here. We don't get a lot of cra white crappies back in Minnesota, and we certainly don't get them this size in these kind of numbers. We've been out here maybe 15, 20 minutes, and it's just been big fish after big fish after big fish. Kind of reminds me of the stories that everybody had, you know, up a red lake when the crappie boom was going on up there. You still got fish down in your holder? I do not. But this is a 15 and an eighth inch fish. Over 15? Over 15 and an eighth. I'll take it because I earned it. What a giant. Look at that thing. <laughs> what a toad. And like I said earlier, what I love about him, thick as a phone book across the back. And you know what, he's gonna earn a pass. If you ever make it down here to Glen Elder, this fish just might be waiting for you. 16, 17 inches. And another one waiting right there. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Markham Technologies introduces ice fishing to the digital age with the LX Digital Sonar System. Boasting vivid color LCD displays and features not found on other ice electronics, all digital units offer a user-defined display tailored to match the way you fish. An on-screen dashboard that puts critical information at your fingertips and free firmware updates that guarantee your electronics are never outdated. This winter, step into the digital age with an LX Series Digital Sonar Unit from Markham Technologies. You know, one of the things I love about traveling around the ice belt, hitting lots of different fisheries is, you know, not only experiencing the different bites that we, uh, you know, get to enjoy, but also seeing how anglers approach their local bodies of water just a little bit different than we would. What we're seeing down here uh, with the Kansas anglers is they actually use their summer, summer equipment. Okay, obviously our short stuff works as well, but uh, they're using their summer rods, six, seven foot long rods, heavier line and big lures eighth, quarter ounce, hair jigs, tube jigs. Come here, sweetheart. Oh, they're all so big. And that's what works for the anglers down here. And don't, you know, think that they're not catching as many fish as we are. They're holding their own. And it's just a very unique perspective on how to fish these Kansas crappies uh, in a way that, you know, we would never even consider doing back home. Beautiful fish. You know, it's really cool to watch these guys. They'll be sitting on a bucket or be sitting on a small sled, and they've got these two long rods, and they're fishing some pretty, you know, large, heavy baits, ones that we would never consider using in the winter. And uh, they're doing really, really well using this technique where they're just slowly lifting and raising their rods. They'll pause and just wait for that crappie to lean on those baits. And, you know, you kind of watch them work, and it just provides uh, kind of some inspiration for me anyway. And that's one of the great things about traveling around the ice belt like this is I get exposed to a lot of different techniques or methods that I certainly wouldn't find if all I ever did was just fish those same lakes back home in Minnesota. Crappy, crappy. Come on, buddy. And just, uh... What are you doing with that? <laughs> a little bit on the smaller side, but still nonetheless a heck of a white crappie. I knew he hit it. I wasn't sure if he <laughs> engulfed it or not. So I was just going to do a slow raise and let that quick tip do its work. Stay out Looks of there. Looks that's a free, right? That's not good. Look at this. <laughs> Fresh bait, big crappie. 
<laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> you know, I know I'm not going to have a day like this again this year, unless we come back here where we're going to be able to catch fish like this. And, you know, we should talk about, we keep saying they're white crappies, they're white crappies. And my guess is they look a lot like black crappies if you're not, you know, uh, used to the differences. Black crappies will have kind of like speckled dots all up and down the side. And if you look at these white crappies, they've got kind of like speckles in bars. See the bars that kind of work their way down? That's kind of indicative of a white crappie, but the only true way to tell that I'm aware of is a black crappie will have six or seven of these spines across the top, and a white crappie will have five or six. So not a huge difference. They look real similar. It's real easy to confuse them, but that's the difference that's right there. And oh, look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. That is a heck. That's quite, quite a pair. That's a pair of big Kansas whites right here. Huge. Hi, buddy. Very simple, right in the face, right in the snout is that uh, pug bug with that chartreuse, or orange and chartreuse nymph that has just been so hot for us. I gotta put this one on tape just to Help solve yourself. my curiosity. 14, 3 8 wow. built like a linebacker through and through. Yeah, just a huge, you mentioned those shoulders on these big crappies, big mouths. They could definitely eat a three, four inch shad. That's Easily. why all these locals are using those big tubes. I'm gonna let this girl go. Yeah, locals are fishing here with longer rods. They can't fish the 16 ounce pug bugs like, well, I suppose they could, but they'd just lose all feel. They're doing just fine. I don't see any reason for them to change <laughs> the way we fish them. We might even want to think about changing the way they fish them. <laughs> yeah, if a person is coming down here, you know, it, it'd be fun to, to use a summer ultralight yeah, absolutely. Uh, rod. You know, we just got these great short rods and we we'll keep using them. Well, good luck using one of those long rods in an ice house back at home when it's 30 <laughs> below zero. Yeah. Hook sets are going to be kind of a problem <laughs> at that point. <laughs> All new this season, Trigger X soft baits are now available in micro-sized offerings for panfish. The Trigger X panfish series features seven new baits that rely on the proven ACT formula for success. Action, color, and taste. A combination that ensures fish will bite and hold on tight. Designed to mimic their natural counterparts, each innovative body shape moves with a fluid and seductive motion making the Trigger X panfish soft baits a must-have for all serious panfish anglers. You know, we're down here at Glen Elder, it's north central Kansas, and I'm sure guys are thinking, you know, who's gonna drive that far for crappies? Uh, the truth is, one of the very best trophy black crappie fisheries that I'm aware of uh, would be up in the northwest angle, Lake of the Woods. Guys flock up there every winter in droves, and that is almost exactly the same drive, distance-wise and time, uh, up to the Northwest Angle that we have invested to come down here uh, to Kansas. And let me tell you, I'm digging the weather. Back at home today, it's a lot colder. It's snowing down here. We're gonna hit 40 degrees. We got a little, you know, low hanging fog, but other than that, it is a beautiful, beautiful crappie catching day. There it is. This is a... I've never seen you move that fast for a crappie before. Look at that thing. See him out there on the clear ice? Yeah. That is cool. Holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that thing. That's just, you know, to the point of being ridiculous. You know, it's definitely down here in, in Kansas. These are most definitely, most definitely trophy fish. But the thing about it is we just haven't caught that many small fish today. You know, a small fish today has been... 12 inches. Our average has been well over 13, if not 14 plus. Um, take great advantage of these trophy fish, these trophy lakes. Let these big fish go like this. You know, you gotta be respectful of its resource. And you know, these fish are just, in my opinion, just way too big to clean. About the only fish that I'd ever keep out of here would be one to, to put on the wall if I was gonna put one on the wall. But um, definitely give the respect that they deserve and let them go back. There he is. Think these fish will push deeper at all? This one didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if you are a crappie fisherman, if this place is not on your bucket list, something's wrong. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I think the smallest fish I've caught today has probably been 12, 13 inches long. 
plug bug jig with that Trigger X Nymph kicking out some big white crappies. Every one of them's big. I don't know, there's small fish in the lake. Let them go. Oh, there's another one waiting for it. I'm gonna stop talking and start catching. Get that jig squirt away. Man, that fish was so aggressive, Cal. Just see him come on the screen and just start raising. He just start chasing. There he is. If I can get down there quick, there's a fish there. Nice. <laughs> I just moved away from where James is fishing, and this very well could be my biggest crappie of the day right there, folks. You know, we fished an area pretty exclusively this morning because we had fish moving through during that you know, magical hours in the morning here with the barometer uh, falling and the, the, the cloud cover here. But just getting away from where we were fishing, there's active fish uh, all along this break line. And once again, that VMC pug bugs does the trick, but I'm gonna get her back right away because there was three fish here ready to go. Wow, that's a big fish. <laughs> nice. Get right back down there right away. Adjust the knot so that this nymph sits horizontal down there and not so much vertical. It looks like a more natural presentation. And hopefully there's a few more of its friends nearby. If you are an experienced crappie fisherman and one of your favorite species to fish or just a recreational angler, you really owe it to yourself to, you know, jump online and research some of these uh, phenomenal fisheries within the upper Midwest. Go get that auger. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you bust me. <laughs> Honda power and reliability have been combined with Strikemaster's legendary ice cutting technology to produce the 35cc Honda Light. Powered by a powerful and efficient engine, the 35cc Honda Light offers first pull reliability and weighs in at a feather light 23 pounds when equipped with an 8 inch laser auger. This winter, pick up a Honda 35cc Light from Strikemaster, the most reliable and fastest cutting four stroke auger on the ice. Another neat trick to do with this is to swing your transducers. Because if you swing your transducer, you'll be able to see what's out to the side. So if that school is moving, you can follow that. You know, a lot of the, the, the locals here, our friend Randy Wheeler that I've connected with, um, they fish with their summer rods and they don't get an opportunity to fish with the Markham units or the, the tuned up custom rods. And some of our spare units that we bring with on these trips we're actually letting these guys use, and, and I was talking to we them about- We call that corrupting the locals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was, here comes a fish. So I was letting them uh, talk, talk about how to stay on the school with the, the minimal ice that you get down here in Kansas, that if you swing that transducer, you can stay on that school or find that magical shelf bottom that you're looking for. There it is. Man, that hole is just hot. Huh? Dang it. Oh, oh well, there's, I know there's another one there, so. <laughs> well, you leave that hole, I'll come and fish it for you for a while. There you go. Holy crap. <laughs> this is so much fun. I mean, we come down here and um, get to fish with these guys and share techniques and ideas and then to watch them, you know, hop in with the Markhams. They fish with sonar before, but it's usually their units off the boat, you know, just using it in graph mode. And it doesn't really work the same <laughs> to get these guys to use, you know, true ice fishing electronics and then, you know, let them use some of the gear that we use, which is in such, such stark contrast to the gear that they normally use. And of course, they're very successful. I'm not saying our way is better. It's just different. And watching them have fun with it, just a, it's a lot of fun. It's gratifying for us. <laughs> <laughs> He's so uninterested in talking to you now. God, you He's there. He's <laughs> little He's more just more. there. Are you kidding me? Come on, dude. This is great. It's fun. There, I got him. Bottom lip. <laughs> here, here. Come here. Another one? Yep. See him waiting there? Well, I tell you what, those holes down there, they got no fish. Oh, well, you yeah. bet. Two of them there, huh? Yep. Here comes one. Oh, that got him. <laughs> one going down, one coming up. There's another one down there. Yep. So there's two more down there. Bottom lip. Holy smokes. <laughs> this is so much fun. When you can buddy fish like this. Yeah, this. <laughs> All right. Another one holds. I see it. Going down. 
wouldn't you know what he turned my bait now what's special about this hole i fished that one <laughs> i fished that one it's this hole these holes have been drilled pretty much all day and we're just coming back through and cycling through these old holes we basically punched these first things this morning it's so warm they didn't freeze back up and i really think that's a huge part of what's making this happen that one just swam back down the hole. That's the biggest one of the, <laughs> the five. Oh, this, <laughs> this place is special. Wow. That is a tank. <laughs> Look at that thing. Look at another one. See if we can get six of them out of here real quick. <laughs> I trust you, brother. I'm going to let him go. I don't want him to go dart down and spook your fish, but. See, there's another one waiting there. Oh, swam right by it. I see that. Well, sometimes they come up so hard and fast, they, they miss it. Well, don't miss it. <laughs> oh. Look at these things. There's another one down there. I got him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's eight crappies of this caliber, all out of this same hole. Go, 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 go. <laughs> this is the little guy of the bunch, which seems fair since it's your hole. They're just piled in here. Why? Why do you, there's nothing here. What is going on with this hole, man? It's just filthy. That Markham is just covered. At some point, this group of fish is gonna be like, um, okay, something's <laughs> not quite right. Yeah, that was just amazing. I really am a bad knot tire. Well, when you're fishing with such fine line, I can understand why. Those fish were just tuned up. I mean, everything about them was just, ah. It was, it was something we haven't seen yet today you know we're fishing in a really tiny percentage of the whole body of water of this glen alder lake what do you think this little area is 2,000 acres 1500 acres yeah so that would leave 10 12,000 acres on that side that nobody ever fishes there's got to be some 18 inch fish in here or bigger <laughs> i understand what you're saying wow look at this one Look at that giant hole. Look at that thing. Here's what we're going to do. Right in the beak. We're going to call quits to this right now. <laughs> when I woke up this morning, I was mad at crappies. I wanted to come out here, fish hard, catch as many of these things as I could. I'm no longer mad at them. I've uh, somehow just uh, achieved some kind of crappie nirvana, and I'm ready to start the drive home. Yeah, this, for the first time being here, this lake definitely out punted its coverage for us. <laughs> I'm gonna let this one go quick. By far, without question, this is the best day of crappie fishing I've ever had. The number of 14 to almost 16 inch fish we caught today was unbelievable. It just came through the hole like a conveyor belt, one after another after another. And there was times today where we'd catch four, five, six, even seven fish back to back out of the same hole. I've never done that anywhere else. So this lake, Glen Elder Lake, North Central Kansas, definitely worth a look. I know I'll be back and I've Absolutely. definitely <laughs> found an appreciation for the white crappie. So from Cal and I, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Later. At some point tonight, about two and a half hours into this drive, I will announce, boys, we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.